welcome back. Happy Monday. Um, I hope you guys had a great weekend. Um, before we get started with our new material this week, I thought we would go over a few things. Um, one, the Tuesday Zoom meeting time that I had set up has changed. Um, it is now going to be from 12.30 to 1.30. So make sure you, if you need that for anything, make sure you write that down. And that's not a reminder along with everything else later in the week. Um, if you haven't turned in the assignments from last week, you can still turn those in. Um, just make sure you let me know that you do. That way I know to grade them ahead of time. All right, so let's pull up what we are doing today. All right. So I had mentioned previously that we were gonna be doing this idea of the Boer Wars and colonization in Southern Africa. So before we get too far, I want to clarify a few things. One, we are not talking about animals in this case. Um, I'll explain what the word war means here in a minute. Um, this is largely about how a group of Dutch farmers led to British colonization of Africa and a system of segregation known as apartheid. So before this is all over, you should be able to do the following. Explain why the Dutch wanted a colony here in the Cape of Good Hope region. Um, describe how that colony eventually became British. Um, describe why the Dutch farmers who became known as Boers eventually left and established their own independent states. Um, describe the Boer Wars themselves and their role that Native Amer Africans played. Um, notice I said wars as in there's more than one. And then we're gonna talk about the political situation in the region after these wars and after colonial independence. Okay, so the Dutch. They began arriving in the Cape of Good Hope region, which is this place down here, in 1652, hoping to create a resupply station for their ships and explorers heading to their other colonies over here in the Dutch East Indies, which today would be the modern countries of Indonesia. Um, soon this resupply station became a major colony and was a vital source of materials for the trips to and from Europe. Uh, it provided food, clothes, weapons, things that the Dutch needed to complete the expedition from Holland or Netherlands up here all the way to the Dutch East Indies and back. So I mentioned earlier that this is known as the Boer Wars. Boer is actually the Dutch word for farmer. So in a sense, these are called the farmer wars. And that'll make a little bit more sense once we get further into it. Um, it would be a Dutch colony for around 200 years until 1806 when the Netherlands, which is this red spot up here, were taken over by Napoleon Bonaparte of France and Britain happened to be fighting the Dutch, or happened to be fighting Napoleon at the time, and so they saw the Dutch surrender as a chance to expand their African possessions, and they acquired the Cape Colony as part of the treaty that ended the Napoleonic Wars. So Britain saw the value of this because they had their colonies in India, and so they, as part of their peace agreement with Napoleon and the Dutch up here in 1815, acquired officially acquired the Cape Colony. So soon after the British became, the colony became British, the British began sending their own people to the colonies. And within a few years, those people actually outnumbered the Dutch settlers in the Cape Colony. The British eventually became what we're gonna call culturally dominant, meaning British ideas, influences, people, foods, all the things we think of with culture became the dominant practice in the region. Um, so this meant that a lot of the things that the Dutch wanted to do, the Boers wanted to do, as we're going to call it from now on, they couldn't really do because the British began putting in place laws that went against the Dutch culture, went against the Boer beliefs, and their role in how they saw the treatment of Native Native Africans. Um, Britain 
if you remember back from our West Africa unit, had outlawed slavery in their colonies. And so this applied to Southern Africa, which meant that the Boers, who, like most Europeans at that time, did not look finally upon Afri Native Africans, could not legally hold slaves in the colony. And this just didn't, this, among other things, didn't sit well with the Boers. But the issue of slavery was the one that kind of forced their hand in a sense. So eventually, for over the course of roughly a decade, from 1835 to 1843, roughly 12,000 of these Boers left the Cape Colony in what is known as the Great Trek. They migrated further north from the Cape Colony, eventually created two separate colonies that would become independent in 1853. So the two colonies that we're gonna be looking at are Transvaal, which is this one up here, this orange one on the map, and then the orange free state, which is a smaller one over here. So these two would be recognized as independent in 1853. And at first things kind of went okay. Um, eventually, however, things became a lot more complicated when gold and diamond deposits were discovered along the borders between these two republics and the British possessions here. So no one was really sure who they belonged to. The British claimed they were theirs. The Boer republics claimed that they were theirs. And so eventually this led to a series of conflicts. The first one, the, first, the most notable being the two Boer Wars that we're gonna be focusing on. The first one lasted for roughly a year from 1880 to 1881. And the second one, which is more important, and I'll get to as to why that is here in a second, lasted from 1899 to 1902. Um, the first Boer War was actually a humiliating defeat for the British. And it was actually the only time outside of the American Revolution where the British lost a series of battles or a war over a people they were either colonizing or attempting to colonize. So this was like one of the few times where the Britain was kind of outmatched in a sense. Um, the Boers largely could contribute their success to this tactic known as commando raids where they would hit British supply points, um, British troops on the march, just hit and run tactics. Um, they were often called commando raids and that is where we get this word commando. So the word commando actually comes from the Boer Wars here. Um, so I mentioned that these two wars are vital for a couple of reasons. If you notice, we they were even talking about these wars in San Francisco, California, which is on the other side of the United States. But you notice this is front page of the San Francisco Chronicle. So this is massive worldwide news at the time. And to give you something we haven't really been able to find is footage of, video of something from this time period. So we're gonna show you this clip real quick and then we will go on.
All right, so what that was was actually video footage of British troops preparing to leave England for Southern Africa and actually arriving and conducting various operations in the region. So I thought it was something different that we would look at. Um, but we need to get to the most important part of this, and that is the Second Boer War. So this actually took place over three years, roughly, 1899 to 1902, and would drastically change politics in Southern Africa. Um, this one, unlike the first one, would actually end up in a defeat for both of the Boer Republics when their respective capitals were captured by the British in 1900. Um, now this, the largely the significance of this comes down to this part right here. As a result of this peace treaty, Transvaal and the Orange Free State, those are the two Boer Republics, became a part of the British colony in South Africa with the condition that eventually sometime down the road, they would be given independence or self-governance and in 1910, this became a reality with the creation of the Union of South Africa. So this Union of South Africa essentially was the two Boer Republics and then all the British territories that included the Cape Colony. So these became one country and through various political maneuvers and other avenues of manipulation, the Union of South Africa would be run largely by the white Boer population who would eventually in, put in place a series of discriminatory policies towards the African peoples that would eventually become known as apartheid. So as essentially, even though the Boers lost the Second Boer War, they ended up gaining control of their own republics and the British colonies in their own country and they use that to create a system of separation between themselves and the native populations. So this system is known as apartheid. Um, you might have heard a similar version of this in the US known as the Civil Rights Movement and the Jim Crow laws. They are very similar in their, how they treat people of African descent. In this case, it's the native South Africans. In the United States case, it's African Americans in the South largely. Um, we will look at, compare the two more on Thursday, but this is where that idea becomes reality for the Boers and the native Africans. So one of the things we want to look at is what role did the native peoples play in this war? Um, both the Boers and the Dutch actively employed native populations to support their war effort. Around the start of the war, both sides employed the native peoples in non-combat roles, such as wagon drivers, meaning they weren't actively fighting on the front lines. They were kind of doing support work, um, not part actively partaking in combat. Um, the British soon began using the native populations in more dangerous roles, such as guides, spies, and they eventually even trained them to be frontline soldiers. The native populations were armed by the British as a form of self-defense against the Boers, and then eventually those Boers would gain political and economic control of the Union of South Africa and begin discriminating against the natives. So, your assignment for Monday is going to be on Canvas in our module for, for today. Um, it's seven questions and a mix of multiple choice and short answer questions. And it will be due 8 a.m. Thursday, April 16th. And I just realized that I have April 9th on here. That should actually be April 13th. That is tomorrow or today, April Monday, April 13th. Um, and as with all Monday assignments, it'll be due 8 a.m. on the following Thursday. So in this case, it'll be due April 16th. Um, as always, use any notes you've taken, rewatch this, look over the PowerPoint. If you have any questions or email questions, send me an email or message me on Canvas. I will see what I can do. Otherwise, I hope you guys have 
a good week, and I will see some of you on Thursday.